right, we have another transformer winding video here. I'm going to take this transformer right here. This is a very heavy duty. It's a really large microwave oven transformer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into a step up and step down transformer. Basically, I'm going to leave the 120 volt primary intact. And I'm going to remove the high voltage or the 2000 volt secondary winding, which is a lot of fine wire right here. When I remove this winding, what I'm going to do is replace it with another winding. Once this is completed, I'll be able to feed 120 volts into this winding and out of the lower winding, get out 240 volts. Whatever amperage I'm feeding in on this winding will be twice the voltage and half the amperage on this winding. Now in order to do that, I'm going to cut the core open. You can see there's a weld line right here. And there's a weld. And this is an EI transformer core. And what I mean by that the transformer core is made up of laminations just like this, E's and I's. Now, if you have a transformer where it's alternating, one is like that, and then they put one here, and then they take the other I and they put that there, all right, that would be a real pain in the ass to undo. So luckily, this transformer and a lot of other ones has an E and the I that comes together like that, and then they just stack all the E's on one side, and they put all the I's on one side, like this, like that, until they get the full thickness of this transformer. So right here on the top is where all the I's are stacked. So I'm going to get my cutoff wheel, which is a cutoff wheel for a circular saw for metal. And I'm going to cut out this weld down to about an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to turn this around. And I'm going to cut this one out with the circular saw. Once you cut both sides, this whole flat piece on top will lift off. And then you'll be able to slide out each one of these windings. Now once I do that, I'm also going to remove these metal plates, which you can see inside. There's one there and one there. Those are the shunts, they alter the magnetic field. And I'm going to pull those out too because those will no longer be needed. And I'm going to remove this winding and the shunts and leave that behind. Once that's removed, I'm going to wind my new winding and install it in position where this one is. And then I'll have my higher voltage 240 volt secondary and I'll have the 120 volt primary or I could feed in 240 volts into the secondary and get 120 volts out of the primary. Now this would make a great travel transformer. The only issue is you want to look for a transformer that says 50 slash 60 hertz because this one here is just a 60. Now this will probably work but the problem is if you use this at a lower frequency it's going to, it's going to heat up because the transformers are designed for a specific frequency. Now a lower frequency transformer, such as a 50 hertz transformer, is designed to handle more lines of magnetic flux. But a 60 hertz transformer is designed for fewer lines of flux. As the frequency goes higher on the transformer, the number of flux lines goes down. So if I use this transformer, for a 50 hertz line, what's going to happen, this will heat up, is too many lines of flux for that 60 hertz transformer. Now you could take a 50 hertz transformer, which is designed to handle a lot more lines of flux, and you can use a 60 hertz supply with that, and there'll be no problem at all, because you'll have the capability in that transformer to handle more lines of flux, even though you're not doing that. Now also the Transformers generally get smaller as the frequency goes up because you don't need bigger transformers for higher frequencies. You can take a look in your switch mode power supplies for LCD TVs, 
and cable converter boxes and DVDs. A lot of those electronics no longer use large transformers. They use a much smaller transformer because the conversion is being done at a much higher frequency. Instead of converting 60 hertz, they're converting thousands of hertz, 10,000, 20,000. So they're able to use a much smaller transformer to get a high current output. So if you're looking to make this a travel transformer, look for either a 50 hertz or a 50 slash 60. That's best and you will not have any heating problems. You can try a 60, but you may experience the transformer getting hot. If you're only going to use it intermittently for powering a few things on and off, you should be okay. But if you're going to use it continuously, definitely use a 50 slash 60 hertz transformer or a 50 hertz transformer. I'm now going to cut these weld lines out and I'll be back in a minute and show you what it looks like. Okay, I took my cutoff wheel on my circular saw and I cut out both welds on both sides and there you have it. This has to be welded back on when you're all finished. Move that to the side. This is what it looks like with the top off. I'm going to remove the primary first and then the secondary second. Put this aside while I'm working on the secondary winding. Okay, as you can see, the primary has been removed, the secondary. This will be tossed out. I'm going to have to use heavier wire. I might just keep this for scrap in case I need to wind another solenoid or another transformer. This is the core all clean and ready to go. I'll leave it like that. Now, in the video description area, I'm going to put a link to a transformer calculator. Now, what it is, you're going to measure the dimensions of the core, the core area. This one's 31 millimeters by 72, and that will determine how much wattage you can get out of this core. Now, this is roughly a 500 watt core, around four, between 420 and 500. Once you have the measurements of the core, you enter that into the transformer calculator with your input voltage and your desired output voltage and desired current, and it will give you how many turns of wire for the primary and the secondary. So it's fairly simple. Just make sure you know the core area, larger core, higher wattage, smaller core, uh, lower wattage, if you're using the same frequency. So now the next step, I'm going to make a little cardboard bobbin to be winding my wire on. That's the next step. Alright, this is the completed bobbin that I made. It's out of a heavy cardboard. And good old E6000, you can see the shine that bonds it all together. This will slide off the core and I could wind it with the 530 turns of 20 gauge and slide it all the way back down. Then reinstall the primary. And then I could put the top back on after checking to make sure the voltage is right and then weld both sides again. All right, that's the core. That's the core removed. That's how I made it. So now the next step, I will wind this up and I'll show you what it looks like. That's what it looks like when it's all wound up. I went a little heavier on the gauge of the wire due to the fact that the primary is using around a 14 gauge wire, which is actually a little heavier than the transformer calculator suggests that you use. So to compensate, I used a little heavier on the other winding. This one only has about 100 turns on it. This one has about 200 to 210 turns of approximately 17 or 18 gauge wire. So I'm now going to cover this up with some tape, slide it back into the core, place the primary on top, push it down, and then I'm going to put the top plate, which is made up of all the eyes. I'm going to run a weld with my homemade microwave oven stick welder. I'm going to run a bead here and on the other side and I will demonstrate how well this works. Alright, this is what it looks like with the windings back in place. That's the original 120 volt primary from the microwave oven. This is the newly wound 240 volt secondary. Now I tested the windings, each one, and I checked from each winding to the core itself. Everything is fine. The next step now is going to be to apply 120 volts to the primary and measure the output voltage on the secondary. 
After that's complete, I will then weld the transformer back. All right, I'm connected up now to 120 volts, right there, tripled up on the wires to handle the current. That's my output, that should be around 250. And the meter's connected. I'm going to place this piece of wood on top of the transformer so I could step on it with my foot because it's going to vibrate because it's not welded. Now while I'm pressing down on the wood to keep the transformer from vibrating, you will be looking at the digital multimeter to observe the voltage output on the newly wound secondary winding. Okay, I'm stepping on the wood. And here we go. Two hundred and fifty five volts, that's perfect. Transformers all welded back on. Now I'm going to power it up and this is connected to the output there you go this has a very slight hum I'm going to hook up a couple of 100 watt light bulbs 120 volt in series to show you the output Let me power it up. And the voltage is 255 flowing through both of these lights right here. All right, I'm all connected up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to step down the 240 volt supply down to 110 or 120 and I'm going to be powering that jigsaw and at the same time I'll be powering this palm sander and I could actually even put another couple of hundred watts on top of these two if I wanted so what I'll do now is I'm going to turn on the breaker and show you how well this works so let me turn this on and get that going we're already connected there now this winding here, if you're powering from 240 and you're stepping down to 110, runs a lot, lot cooler than this one was when I was going from 120 volts up to 240. Only because of the way this primary was wound, it does get a little hot. But when you're going from the 240 to 110, there's a big difference. And this winding does not get hot at all. It gets slightly warm, and that's about it. So right now, I'm going to power it up and show you how it works. All right, we're powered up, 114, coming from the 240. That's running. And now I'm going to turn this on as well. That. So as you can see, it works extremely well. I could place this transformer inside of a little metal housing, and I could take a microwave oven cooling fan and position it behind the transformer to keep it extra cool, and I could put a fuse on the output, and I'm good to go. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you very much for watching.